but before leg- leg- uh, legalization, rather, mm-hmm. you know, people would claim, you know, it's harmless and, and uh, nothing bad will come of it. But I guess now we see, you know, the 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 effects because there is some data to show, as I said, this is surge in this uh, in these schizophrenia related cases and especially considering the high potency. I think that a lot of um, doctors point to that as being the issue. I mean, like the THC content in some of the stuff that you can buy nowadays approaches 30 percent in in just in just flour itself. I mean, not to not to mention the concentrates, which can get higher than that, which is very different from your grandpa's dope Mm -hmm. uh, (laughs) of like five, 10 percent THC back in the day. What I see clinically and then even in these research papers is a lot of young adolescents, usually males that are using high potency THC daily. And then I see them in the emergency room because they're having persistent psychotic symptoms. You know, when you have an adolescent male, I think the age group was 16 to 18 or even 14 to 18, I'm forgetting the exact age range, that has a substance or cannabis induced psychosis. Within three years, their risk of transitioning to a schizophrenia spectrum disorder, so that's schizophrenia, schizoaffective, things like that, is almost 50%. If I'm a parent or if I'm the person that is contemplating, you know, smoking high potency THC regularly at that point in my life, I think I would at least have a second thought about that. If that doesn't change someone's decision making, power to them. But I think it, it's just something people ought to be informed about uh, before doing that because schizophrenia is a lifelong disease with very, very poor outcomes for the majority of people.